Have you ever designed a product and released it to the market and it works? It does what you say it will do, but customers don't want to use it or they use it once and they sit it down in the corner and never touch it again. And the reviews of your product are kind of making your company look bad. This episode will review some tools and strategies to help prevent that from happening before product launch or to help as a starting point when you plan for your version 2.0. Listen in after this brief introduction. Hello and welcome to Quality During Design, the place to use quality thinking to create products others love for less. My name is Diana. I'm a senior level quality professional and engineer with over 20 years of experience in manufacturing, design, and quality. Listen in and then join the conversation at qualityduringdesign.com. We have a problem with the design that we put into the market. When we designed it, it went through our design development process or design control, and it was successfully verified and validated. So it met all the requirements and user needs that we had created for this design. But a problem is that we launched the product and people are buying it, but they're not using it. There's perceived value in what the function of our design is because lots of people bought it, but then they use it once and set it in the corner and are giving the company bad reviews. I know there were a lot of inputs leading into the design process, but if we're looking to the design process itself, one of the first places I would look is to how the user procedure was documented and acted on. At what level of detail is the user's process flow? It may not have been detailed enough. If lacking enough detail, then some important user needs and requirements may have been missed. There's a balance that we need to achieve with use scenario, user process. We need to keep it simple enough so that we can execute against it. If it is so detailed and large and cumbersome, it's going to prevent us from wanting to use it and integrating it with the rest of the design process. But on the other hand, we can't have it too high level and too simple because then we run the risk of missing something important to our user that we're not capturing in our design. How and at what point do you realize that the level of detail in your use scenario, user process, is just not enough for your design and that it could end up in a design that is functional but that people just don't want to use? During our design process, we usually have a prototype evaluation or other points where we're getting feedback from potential customers or representatives of our user base. Whenever they provide feedback on a particular feature, here is when we have a decision we can make. We can either look directly at that feedback and fix that particular feature that they gave the feedback on, or we can realize that, hey, we missed this, Maybe we need to step back and look at all of our user scenario and use process and make sure they're at the right level of detail. If we miss this feature that our customers are giving us feedback on, we may have missed something else. So when we get this type of feedback, we don't just want to fix that particular complaint. We want to take another discerning look at the information that we're using to create our design. Because in the end, we're really striving for products that have exceptional user experiences. Not that they're just reliable and functional, but that people want to use over and over again. Let's walk through an example, something simple that we can visualize and maybe peg in our memory so that when we're going through our more complex designs, that we can remember this as an example and it'll remind us to do the right thing. Let's say that we are designing a night shirt for a child. So this is a simple design. It's a shirt to be worn at night, let's say in the winter, for a kid. So we know that it has to have long sleeves, it has to be made of material that is nice and cozy, and it has to be a particular size. We'll even make it more simple. All the children that we're making it for are a size 10. We've designed our product and we're putting it through our design control. We have user needs. Our user needs is that it's got to be cozy, has to fit, but it can't be so big that they're getting tangled in it. 
Um, we have some requirements for what kind of material it needs to be made out of and what the sleeve length would be. And then we have some specifications that could look like a pattern for a shirt. The other thing that we've generated is our use scenario and our user process. For our example, it's pretty simple. A kid needs to wear it to bed. We've developed our night shirt and have created some prototypes. And now we take it to representatives of our user groups to give us some feedback on how our prototypes are looking. We find out that their head doesn't fit through the head hole. Oh gosh, our mistake, we're so sorry. Let's just snip a little around the neck hole, we'll make it a little bit bigger, and we'll continue on with the rest of the design. But wait, we fail the prototype evaluation. The kid couldn't wear it, they couldn't get it over their head. This is where we have a choice. We can just fix the head hole, cut into it, make it a little bit bigger, or we can take a closer look at our user process and our usability file. Did we miss something else about how they're going to use this product? Let's say we fix the head hole and we continue on with our design development and we either get to a later prototype model or we get to our production models and we give it to our users again. And this time they can get their head through the head hole, but now they can't get their arms in the sleeves. They look like little contortionists trying to twist around in order to get the shirt on. They can get it on if an adult helps them. Our shirt is functional. It meets our requirements. The, the sleeve lengths look good. The material's nice and cozy. The kid can wear it to bed. That was our requirements. Kid must have to wear the nightshirt to bed. But the kids don't want to wear it. They don't want to ask a grown-up to help them put on a nightshirt for bed. They don't like it. We know it's not right, and they know it's not right. But we had spent so much time and money on it that we just didn't want to give up on it. So we started to sell it. Well, that's okay. We did get it on. And look, see how it fits nicely? And isn't it nice and cozy? Let's face it. Our shirt design was a failure. The user doesn't want to use our product. It's too hard to use. It performed its function and it met its requirements, but the customer is not happy. Our user process was not detailed enough. And because of that, we missed important needs and requirements. Remember, our user information was, a child wears the shirt to bed. A more appropriately detailed user process could have been, step one, put the shirt on. Step two, walk and move in it. Step three, wear it to bed. Step four, take it off. And step five, put it through the laundry and get it clean. We could break it down even further with a few more steps and details. For example, our step number one, put the shirt on, could be broken down into 1A, pull the shirt down over the head, 1B, push arms through the sleeves one at a time, and then finally 1C, grab and pull the bottom hem of the shirt down toward the floor. If we had more detail in our user process from the start, it could have forced us to stop and think through more of the use scenarios and design. Even if a user process seems intuitive and simple, sometimes especially so, we benefit from documenting it so we can more clearly see it, communicate it with the rest of our team, and understand it. If at any point a user evaluates our prototype product and has feedback, we shouldn't just address that feedback. We should take another discerning look at our user profile, our use process and use scenarios, and ensure that we've absolutely captured it at the right level of detail. If we find ourselves justifying a design because the user isn't doing it right, well, we need to be prepared to conclude that maybe we didn't design it for the user. We designed it to function, but we didn't design it for exceptional user experiences because we didn't plan and understand enough about our user process and scenario. Maybe we'll be given an opportunity to fix it and we'll go back to our user information and adjust our needs and requirements. Maybe we can't do anything about it, but it's never too late to communicate our lessons learned for the next time. What actions can you take today? 
If you're in the development phase of something now, reacquaint yourself with your user profile process and use scenarios. Make sure you and your team agree that they're at the right level of detail. Whenever you get feedback from a customer, take another discerning look at those user files to make sure they're enough. And maybe peg in your memory the can't fit the head through the head hole story to remind you to watch out for those types of things during your user evaluations of your designs. Now I'd like to hear from you. What are your stories of designs that customers just didn't like? Can you tell us about a specific detail and some of the history about what you could do to resolve it or what you would do differently next time? Add to our conversation at qualityduringdesign.com. Go to this podcast blog and share your story in the comments section. You can visit our catalog anytime at qualityduringdesign.com. This has been a production of Dini Enterprises. Thanks for listening.